Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. This afternoon, we're looking at some cooler temps than we're used to and definitely cloudier than yesterday. Oh, yeah, but yesterday was gorgeous, so we can't complain. But yeah, the clouds and the rain are rolling in. All right. Well, Ron's tracking all of that as we get ready for some thunderstorms. Haven't said thunderstorms in a while. I mean, that's still spring like <laughs> it's not snow, Ron. Oh, we're jumping ahead. <laughs> I mean, this is that period when we can see anything. We can get the temperatures in the 70s. Well, that was a record that we had yesterday with 73. We tied it. Or you could get some snow showers around this time. Well, right now we are seeing temperatures in the 50s, and we have rain and thunderstorms that we're talking about today. Here's a look into Southfield right now. Travelers out there dealing with the rain right now. It's 52 in Detroit. 50 for Ann Arbor and in Lapeer, Monroe coming in at 54 degrees. But the big story, the wet weather, and some of these could even uh, bring some downpours at time as we have those thunderstorms developing this afternoon. So here's what is that track 4D radar is showing the rain showers all across much of the area. You see it around Waterford. You get into the Farmington Hills area, the showers moving around our area. More of this on the way as we pull on out. You can see even a few of these thunderstorms popping up as you get just south of the state line. Also, as you get over toward the Jackson area, some of those showers are popping up with some heavier rain and some thunderstorms. This line right here even producing some warning. So we're going to be tracking this system as it moves in our direction. We do have a chance of a couple of these storms becoming strong to even severe, mainly south of I-96. It's something we'll keep up to date with and let you know if any alerts are issued. All right, Ron. Jurors deliberating at this hour in the trial of James Cromley, the father of the Oxford High School shooter. Both sides rested their cases yesterday afternoon. Now it is in the hands of the jury. And Sean, if I'm following correctly, are we about four and a half hours into deliberations? I was just counting in my head, Rhonda, you are spot on about four and a half hours. I can tell you everything that's going on here and everything that is not going on. First and foremost, do we have a verdict? Absolutely not. Not just yet. How do we know? The jury has been extremely quiet, arriving here at the courthouse at 8.30 this morning, going right to the deliberation room, the jury room. And then just before I came out to the camera, lunch was being, it was on a roller, being taken to the jury. And I asked, anything going on? No, just lunch for the jury. And now we see some jury members who'd like to come out for some fresh air. This is all about the trial of James Crumley, only the second person now, aside from his wife, to be charged for a mass shooting or involved in a mass shooting uh, that his son committed. Four counts of involuntary manslaughter, each four for the deaths of Tate Meir, Madison Baldwin, Hannah St. Juliana, and Justin Schilling. Hannah St. Julian's mother, Nicole, passed me in the hallway. She is here. And of course, it's a very, very tense time. The other thing we know is that the nation's media has descended upon this courts building today. There is media outside all the major networks, uh, um, an outlet from overseas and crews upstairs packing that hallway uh, near courtroom 2C, ready and waiting for anything. So lunch right now. We will keep an eye on this. Of course, we'll head right back up. And the moment we hear that the jury is going to come back, we'll let you know precisely when that is, guys. World. So worldwide coverage of that. All right, Sean, uh, when a verdict is reached, by the way, we'll have it for you live on air and on clickondetroit.com. We invite you to stay with us throughout the afternoon as we watch and wait for that verdict. A Warren man is facing federal charges after police say he spray painted racial slurs and symbols on a predominantly black church and park bathroom. 33 year old David Bluer is facing one count of damaging a religious property and one count of interfering with federally protected activities. He could be looking at a year in prison for each charge. We're working to learn more about how a car ended up into a building in Ferndale. Where here's the aftermath of it here. We're told it started as an argument between two men in Detroit. One man got shot as he was trying to drive away and made it to 8 Mile Road in Santa Rosa before this scene crashing into a Ferndale building. We haven't heard anything else other than that. Uh, uh, responders took the driver to the hospital where he is in critical condition.
The man at the center of a chase and arrest in Sterling Heights is facing eight charges, including five felonies. The department and Macomb County Sheriff's Office is reviewing video of the arrest of Gary Young. It was a domestic violence call on February 25th. Young accused of beating up his girlfriend and her teenage daughter and then leading police on a high speed chase up to 90 miles per hour over 13 miles before he was arrested after running from his vehicle. Vehicle. Physical force, tasers, and a canine were all used to make the arrest. Two officers are on paid leave, which is protocol. Businesses now have 90 days to comply with the new Whippet ban in Michigan. Whippets are sometimes called hippie crack or laughing gas. It's really nitrous oxide canisters. A new law aims to stop the sale of the devices that people use to crack open those canisters to get high. Nitrous canisters are still sold in Michigan for cooking. Anyone caught selling these devices could be looking at 90 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. And penalties are bigger if someone is caught selling to a minor. President Joe Biden paying Michigan a visit today. The expected plan is a campaign stop in the Saginaw area, home to many union-affiliated voters. Biden visited auto workers at a UAW hall last month and has gotten the endorsement from Sean Fain. This visit, part of a two-day, two-state swing through both Michigan and Wisconsin. There is uh, lots of talk about opportunity and high paying jobs and skilled trades. And now students have a new tool right here in Detroit to help decide what skilled trade could be right for them. And at the Career Center, the Skilled Trades Career Center, is open inside Junior Achievement Park. We're told this state of the art space uses virtual reality to help teach students about different industries. And the idea here is to combat Michigan skilled trades labor shortage by providing these VR experiences and the training simulations to young people. There is a big news for a popular convenience store today. Sheets. You've heard of Sheets, <laughs> right? Oh, well, Sheets. <laughs> coming to Michigan. Uh, it's breaking ground on its first Metro Detroit location in Romulus later this afternoon. A second spot will open in Chesterfield later this year. Over the next five or six years, Sheets plans to open 50 to 60 stores in Metro Detroit.